guys, I hope you're all well. So today's video is highly requested. It's all about my Tony Robbins Date With Destiny experience. I can't believe I'm now gonna be talking about it because it felt like I wanted to go to this um, event for so long. That's Gatsby, my cat on my lap, by the way. Do you wanna say hi? Hi. Um, I can't believe after so many years of wanting to go and so long of waiting for it to come around that it's been and gone and I'm now gonna be talking about it. You guys have been asking, what are you doing? Asking for this for a while, but after Tony Robbins, I then got really sick. Um, and I was in then Miami for another week. And then I came home and it was Christmas and I was poorly until probably like almost New Year's Eve really. So, so I'm now gonna film it, but I feel like I've really had to mentally prepare myself for this video because literally guys, there's so much information I was given and shared and knowledge was shared and it was such a spiritual, I guess, experience too, because you went so deep within yourself that I feel like I'm not gonna be able to share everything with you, um, just because this cannot be like a 100 hours long video, you know? Um, but I'm gonna share what I can. So guys, I've written some notes down, but before I go into all of the stuff about Date With Destiny, I'm gonna go into some of the practical side of it first, um, because I find that's quite important and, you know, it's just realistic. So about three weeks before um, I went, I found out that it was gonna be so cold in the room. And I was like, really, is it really gonna be this cold? And it was that cold. I had this blanket that I'm actually wearing now because I'm cold. Um, I had this blanket on a lot of the time. I had like hoodies, thermals, hat, um, scarf, and my big winter coat. And I, mind you, I was in Florida, so it's quite funny. So it's very, very cold. And the reason um, Tony makes it cold is one, because he gets really hot, but two, also it keeps you focused and it's, you know, hard to fall asleep in a freezing cold room. So you're always alert and awake. And also you do a lot of moving around. So you then warm up a bit. It's a bit harder for me because I'm literally just sat here. But what I would sometimes do is go outside because obviously it's warmer outside than inside. I think it's like eight degrees in the seminar room, seminar event room. Um, so pretty cold. And it was colder the closer to the front you were, but each day um, you sat in a different place. So yeah, that you know, you just have to sit where you sat. So that's one thing. So if you go take loads of layers, um, take hand warmers, they're really handy. You know, those little packets that warm your hands up. Take loads of winter clothes. Um, also, there's no real schedule in terms of like, here's lunch break, here's dinner, you know. You have to go out when you can go out. You need to take snacks, so I take snacks. You don't get food um, with the price of the ticket. Um, so yeah, you have to be a bit organized. There is food to buy there. I went to a supermarket the day before it started and I got some bits, but to be honest, I didn't even finish all that food because I just ate when I could. And sometimes, um, you know, I was struggling with like the long hours because guys, this is a long, long six days, but in a good way. Like every day is so long. Every day, oh, my rings fell off. Every day is like, <sighs> go starts at half past 10 in the morning, technically, and finishes like 3 a.m. Like the days are long but it's worth it and you're digging so deep in yourself and it's worth the money because you're getting so much out of this. Um, mind you, most of the time I would say it didn't really start until like one o'clock sometimes. The first day didn't anyway. We got there at half past 10 and didn't start till one. Um, but that was fine. I sat outside and warmed myself up. And what I learned is if I felt like something wasn't necessarily um, something I needed to listen to or anything like that, I would then go outside and warm up because I thought to myself, I know in my heart what I need to be here for. So if there was something that wasn't necessarily important for me or there was maybe a sales pitch because there was a few sales pitches, which was quite frustrating, but it's fine because it helps people because they get to be on different, go to different um, events and stuff like that. So it's fine, but you'd get there at like half 10, 11, and there was like one of these days, I can't remember which day it was, but there was just sales pitches all day, like until like, I don't know, five o'clock. That was crazy. So I just literally sat outside that day and um, 
warmed up before I went in. Um, let me, what else? Um, obviously when you get your ticket, you don't get flights, accommodation, so you have to do that all separately. So please bear that in mind when you buy a ticket because you don't wanna buy the ticket and then um, not be able to afford to stay anywhere. So I thought I'd share those like practical things with you because you need to bear that in mind when you go if you think you can handle the long hours. I didn't think I could and I really, really surprised myself. I was so proud of myself, but um, I was kind of like, I did go like on the first day. Okay, let me just think about this. So the first day I've written down. So I got there about half past 10 in the morning, but it didn't start until around 1 p.m. So I sat outside to like warm up. Um, and on the first day I sat right near the front. Um, however, that day I left at 9 p.m because I just was so exhausted, mentally and physically drained, just in that first day, but mainly probably because I didn't sleep very well, like probably for about five days before. Um, so I left at nine, but apparently I finished at half past two, so I missed quite a lot. On the first day, you can sit wherever you want, basically. You're not in groups or anything. So I sat quite near the front. That was where some reserve seating was. I think it was because of the wheelchair. Um, that was quite lucky because I was quite near the front, it was cool. But before Tony comes on stage, they always have dancers on the stage and they did this obviously on the first day because they did it every day. But um, they do this to change your state and change your physiology. So if you're um, dancing around, moving around, that's when you're in a good mood. You're hyped up, you're excited, you're ready to take action. So before um, Tony came on stage, they did this and this was like the first thing we saw. And they had like this sort of, they had like really good upbeat music like this and people will be jumping up and down like this doing clapping and then they'd be like okay high fives and hugs all around give five people high fives for me like personally awkward high fives because my hands are like this i'm like fist pump fist pump um and also you know you're hugging strangers i'm i mean i don't mind but some people obviously do um but you know what it was it was lovely and by the end of the whole thing, I'm thinking, oh, I just want to hug people. Like, hi, and hug people. Like, in the street, like, say hi to people, hug them. Because you just get so used to hugging so many different people and just feeling that love, like, and genuine. Maybe um, at first people were a bit more like, oh, I don't know. But mind you, most people had been to a Tony Robbins event before. I hadn't. <laughs> so on day one, we're basically identifying our problems. And it's more of an introductory day. So we're kind of thinking what we what we've come for. What are the reasons for where are we happy in our lives and where are we not happy in our lives and it's yeah identifying things within ourselves that we kind of know and we know why we're coming um he also talks about the head and the heart how we should always bring it back down to our heart because our head we get to if he says on in a few days he actually says if you're in your head you're dead and that is so true because literally you're just like Ugh. You know, you just think about it too much, more your ego talking. When you come here, it's more you. Um, obviously I left early that day, but they spoke about effective blaming. Now this means that, you know like if someone has done something really bad in your life and you think, well, you've changed my life because you've done this, my life is not the way I intended kind of thing because of you. Um, or um, you have created such stress in my life such heartbreak in my life, blah, blah, blah. So say if someone's done something negative to you, how it feels negative to you, you also have to start blaming them for all the good that's happened to you. That's what Tony teaches us. Because although they may have done something really awful and it may seem awful at the time, that you are where you are because of those challenges too. So say if um, you've been heartbroken, but then you meet your real love of your life. Well. You've gone through all the crap of being heartbroken with someone and the deceit and the lies of someone, um, but then you've ended up with someone amazing. That's like effective blaming because you can blame them for all the good that's happened after the bad relationship, if you know what I mean, if that makes sense. You could do it any aspect of your life. Um, you could be like, you could have like um, a horrible relative who's always put you down. Um, and made you feel belittled but you've ended up being really caring and compassionate and lovely towards your children so you could blame them for making you a better person for your children because you know what the opposite is 
So you basically wouldn't be who you are today without the negative two. Um, but obviously I missed this because I had to leave early, unfortunately. But everyone had to write things down about this. And, I, and yeah, I think that was a long day. I also remember that day we, um, there was a couple, there was an intervention with a couple um, there was a couple of interventions actually, um, but there was one with a couple and it was just beautiful to see and it just made you, well it made me um, actually ring my mum and just say I love you. I know like obviously that's different because that's a mother and daughter relationship but just seeing people just genuinely caring about each other, it just made me feel so, uh, just feel like I just wanted to share some love and just realise that, you know, all that matters is our connection with one another. It's just so beautiful. Um, day two, we were put in groups. Um, so I was in team R2. Whoop, whoop, everyone. Um, and you've got a buddy. Now, I ended up having my um, assistant as my buddy, which in some ways, I don't think you should be a buddy with your friend. Because I think you dig deeper sometimes when you're with a stranger. Um, so I would recommend if you were going to buddy up with someone who's not with you. To be honest, if you, you know, I had to have my assistant with me, so it was different. But if you went as a, if you went with your friend, you probably wouldn't be put in the same group anyway. So that's fine. Um, and today is about our primary question, a question we always ask ourselves that we don't necessarily realize we're asking ourselves but we do and when you think about it you're like oh yeah I always do this so for an example am I good enough so we're giving ourselves a negative primary question so if you're always thinking oh you know how can I do this well how can I be better at this? am I good enough am I you know you're always you're making yourself not as good as you can be because you are doubting yourself you are not gonna you're gonna be you won't push yourself as far because you won't realize how great you are and you won't realize that you actually can achieve what you want to achieve because you're questioning it i went through, i wrote loads of stuff down i wrote um i went through a few i was like what oh, is it this question is it this question but i kind of diluted it to am i good enough to be honest if i want to tell you what my old primary question was because i was writing all these things down and it was all about like people and success and it was about what can I film and how can I do that blah 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 and it all whittled down to really am I good enough like um so yeah so what we had to do was about our primary question and changing our primary question because what we tell ourselves we become because if we're always giving ourselves a negative primary question negative story we're gonna live a more negative life because that's how it works. So firstly, to discover that primary question, sorry, I went a bit too into the primary question there. Um, so first of all, we had to look at the six human needs. Now, the six human needs are certainty, uncertainty, significance, love and connection, growth and contribution. Now, most people in the room, myself included, the top two were certainty and um, significance. Now I didn't even realise, but honestly, certainty was my number one. And reason being is I like to know that I, more so for my, just to get on with my life, um, I need certainty of, are my personal assistants gonna come in today? Am I gonna be able to live my life because I need people around? Is this gonna mess up everything? You know, I always needed certainty. Someone was gonna come in, someone is gonna come in, was because I'm not going to so worried now um, and also significance I'm always like wanting to be as successful as possible and then and like do people like me and and then I began to realize that significance for what why do I want to be significant why did I want to be significant now I'm like I'm doing this video for you because I want to share the knowledge I've learned because I think that is really important to share what you learn because that's how we make the world a better place and that is where my purpose lies. So in all honesty, the top two most important are growth and contribution. 
Because if you grow, you learn, you develop as a person. Like I said, you can share that and then you're contributing. You're contributing to the world, you're contributing to someone's mental health, their life, their happiness. So they are the top two. And don't focus on what is missing in your life. Focus on what you have and show gratitude, guys. There's so much to be grateful for. Wow, this video is gonna be long. Uh, that day we also um, did, the, so then we've, um, sorry, and then we found our primary question after looking at the six human needs. That day we did the most beautiful meditation I've done in my whole life. Absolutely amazing. I will put a link below because I found a similar, it's pretty much the same, but when we were there it was longer and there was like healing within it, like people came around to put their hands on your head and it was just bloody amazing. Honestly, I opened my eyes and I was crying and laughing and hysterical in a way, but in a beautiful state. I felt like it was just incredible. We had to think what we are grateful for. We had to think of something we were grateful for that was a coincidence. That was life happening for us, not to us. And that's what we learn. Everything is happening for us, not to us. Oh guys, that was just incredibly beautiful. We then went on an incantation walk. We would say things like, I will lead, not follow. Now I am the voice. And all this, it was amazing. It was just so like, we're getting it in our soul. We're getting it in our physiology. So we're walking around this massive lake in the middle of the night. And it looked like a massive, massive peace protest. There was 5,000 people walking around this ginormous lake. And it was just beautiful and empowering and just lovely. And yeah, it was, it was amazing. So day two was pretty special. And I think that was one of my favorite days actually. I just really, really enjoyed it and I managed to stay until the end. So that was great um, and yeah, it was just beautiful and we met so many lovely people because we had our teams and yeah, I just really, really enjoyed that day. Sorry guys, I've had like a three hour break because my battery needed charging so that's why the lighting looks weird, otherwise I wouldn't have mentioned it but yeah, I had to charge my camera. Anyway, where were we? Yeah. Uh, day three. So what we had to do this day was write down some goals initially. So we wrote down one year, three year and five, 10 year goals or one, yeah, one year, three year and 10 year goals. So we wrote down everything we wanted to achieve. Um, even if they seemed really silly, just put them all down. So they're all there and you know, that's a good thing to do. Like goal setting is really good because it really makes you try and strive to achieve those goals. All right, so then we also spoke about the eight levels of consciousness. Now, let me have a look at my book, because by the way, guys, we all got given a big workbook. Oh, loads of stuff fell out, which looks like this. So this was really good, because it's not just like plain pages. There's like bits that you can refer to afterwards, like bits that are already written in there, which is really cool. I would say the problem for me I don't want to think of a negative really, but it was a, it's a little bit like, oh, it's a shame, is that um, because I can't write properly, I can write a bit, but it's really, um, it's quite a struggle um, and it takes a long time. So I wouldn't be able to write notes like the regular person where they're quickly just jotting things down. I have to really like concentrate when I write because I have to use both hands. Um, so I was writing notes down on, on my phone and it's not quite the same because sometimes you're in your, like, not in your head, but on your phone, you're a bit more, I don't know, it's different than sometimes you just wanna jot things down, but obviously I couldn't. So my book is quite empty, which is such a shame, but luckily I did write some stuff on my phone, which seemed to be really important to me. And obviously I've made my poster, but it's just a little bit of a shame that I haven't got loads of my workbook completed like a lot of people did, because it was just, you know, it's good to look back on. Um, but never mind, you know, it's just how it is. But these are the eight levels of consciousness. So. Basically, at the bottom, it's more from your ego, and as you go higher, you are more into like the spiritual side of things. So, um, basically, we were seeing what, in, I mean, we are all of them, really, but different people stood up for different things, so they'd see themselves, say, they see themselves as a level five, which is a striver, driver, slash achiever, and that's the color orange. So, this means the, drive, the drives at this level are for success, strategy, materialism, consumerism, image, status, and growth. I believe in rational thinking, sorry, I believe in rational thought that drives everything, analyze and strategize, science is king. This level perceives the power of hierarchy, examples, Wall Street, middle class, and corporations. So that's just like 
that and that is in the ethnocentric so there's all different ones there's egocentric ethnocentric world centric and spirit centric so world centric is green so that's like looking after the planet and all that stuff but there's all different parts that we could all be a part of. So we can be a cocktail of these because depending on what mood we're in and in what situation. So we could get into, um, it depends, it's depending on what happens. But that's a bit too long-winded to talk about in this one video. But um, I just thought I'd quickly briefly show that to you because that is what we did for quite a bit um, on that day. And then, late, and then later that day, it was suicide night. And now that sounds so like, whoa, this is heavy shit. And it was heavy shit, you know. People had to stand up who were actually thinking about, who had suicidal thoughts. And, you know, for those people, those brave people to stand up in a room of 5,000 people, I'm just so proud of them because they're there probably to change that about themselves. And we listened to a lady's story for a while. I'm obviously not going to go into her story because it's private, even though it's in front of all those people, but it's right in that safe space and it's just crazy to watch Tony work and and how there's always a reason for everything and uh yeah it's just about rewiring the brain and realizing what we're doing what we're doing it's just he rewires your brain it's crazy but you can rewire your own brain it's it's amazing really and I it's it can change people's lives so it's fantastic and you know when you're depressed you're giving yourself the story that you're depressed because you've been diagnosed with having depression or you're really low or you know and you get um antidepressants well you're always going to be like i'm depressed i'm depressed so you're always in that state of i mean i know i've been there so i'm not just saying this because this is what i've been told but I, it's a horrible, it's a horrible, horrible way to be. You have feel like your feelings are numbed and you just don't feel like you can do anything. Um, and it's easy to slip back into that if you're out of the right state and if you say to yourself you're depressed because, you know, you're not gonna feel any better if you keep saying I'm depressed. Oh, I can't, you know, nothing's gonna get better so it's not gonna change, you know? So you need to rewrite write your story. Um, I then got a bit tired and I was getting so like uncomfortable this evening um, and really, really, really cold that I went and laid down for a little while. So I missed some, but I was watching it on screen. So I missed being in the physical room, but I did watch it on a screen as I laid down for a little while. So then um, they brought a guy up on stage. He was also suicidal. And this led into the next part, which was writing down our values. So um, we had to write down them in order so what was important to us not necessarily just like gratitude love like just a few we had to write down quite a lot to make our list and really think about is this more important than this one or is this one more important than this one so we had to write down so my path towards values were in this order security health acceptance success love freedom happiness and my path away were stress loneliness rejection depression failure um so we had to do that and then we had to um just you know they at that moment in time they were my away values and towards values so that was a long night again every night was a long night it it feels like i'm probably not telling you enough information but obviously guys you've got to be there to really get it um i'm explaining as much as i can but this if i share too much it will be crazy long and you need some surprises <laughs> Day four was relationship day. Now I was really excited for this day because I found it really interesting like to see about different energies like feminine and masculine energies and just to know about relationships and stuff. It was intriguing to me and it would be nice to see some love stories and stuff like that. Um, this day didn't, it didn't start until about 6 p.m. It was crazy. I think there was a lot of selling this day. So yeah. Um, and so again, as always, all pumping all the time. Do you know what? I don't think I've been so energetic without being in the gym. Honestly, this whole thing was physically and mentally exhausting. It was so exhilarating because I even listen to the um, the uh, playlist now because it just gets me in that good state. So, and it's crazy how long I could stay up and hardly any sleep as well. I was, I was like, who am I? So first of all, Sage and Tony. Sage is Tony's wife spoke about their relationship and how they got together and it was really uh, lo lovely to hear they were actually friends first and 
um, they both say that it's great to be friends with your partner before anything else. Um, they, um, he spoke about feminine and masculine energies. Now, it doesn't mean man, woman. Um, a woman can have a masculine energy, a woman can have a feminine energy, a man can have a feminine energy. It's just, it's just an energy. But what we learn is that in relationships, they have to have a polarity. So, um, you can't have, it's, it's a struggle if there's two masculine, like two masculine personalities. So, you've really got to get to your core, and then obviously for a woman, it is feminine. That is what our core is, it's, this, it's like the world that makes us more like masculine, and it's great to be independent and be strong and stuff like that, that isn't really anything to do with it, but to have this hard shell isn't really us, it's nice to be from the heart and be our true self, which is feminine. So women connect and men solve. And so what I mean by that, like women like connection and we talk about the details. So if we saw our friend, they dyed their hair, they had a really cute outfit on, we'd go home and tell our partner, we'd be like, so-and-so dyed their hair blue. Oh my God, she had this amazing new Louis Vuitton handbag and these really cute shoes, blah, 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 blah. We would go into it. Whereas a guy would be like, I saw my friend today, you know? So that is the difference, but we've got to learn to accept that. So we have to learn to accept each other's differences. So as women, we have three U's and they are, we don't want to be unsafe, unseen, and we want to be understood. So yeah, that makes sense because we want to have compliments. We want to be seen as who we are, our true selves. We want to be understood in what we're saying, not that we're crazy or not that we're just thinking into things because we connect and we talk and we look into all the finer details. And we want to be safe because, you know, as a woman, it can be an unsafe world sometimes. So we need reassurance. Um, with men, we must never criticise. So what we must do is reassure them and appreciate them for what they do. Don't be close towards men because they want us to be open and free and speak to them so they can feel those things too, so they feel close to us. And also we can't control because at a man's core is freedom. Now this was so powerful. I'm teaching you this guys, I'm, I'm supposed to be telling you about it. Sorry, I'm just talking to it. Um, we've learned that men's core is freedom. So we watched a clip of Braveheart and it was, oh my God, the room was shaking. So Tony stood up, all the women sat down and previously all the women had stood up and the man, men sat down. The women were dancing to, I think it was girls just wanna have fun. And then it swapped to S&M. Um, we had to be all like fun and light with girls just wanna have fun. And then like more sexual with S&M. And they had to just watch and we had to feel safe. We had our eyes shut and they could watch us. So it was our feminine energy. But then we got to the masculine energy, which was our freedom. So that was so powerful. So what Tony did was he went, freedom. And then all the men in the room would go, freedom. And it was just insane. And it was just really powerful. It was like, wow. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, we then had to write down our relationship vision. I'm not gonna go, I've gone really gone into that. Um, I've given you some insights there. So yeah, there's a lot more, but that's enough because this video is getting very long. Um, so, but just remember, if you get in your head, you're dead. Always come back down to your heart. So day five was about rewiring our brains to change our away and towards values. So a couple of nights previous, we had written down, haven't we, like I said earlier, we had written down our away values and our um, towards values. And we had to rewire our brain to change them. Really think about it and how we want our life to be. My new towards values are health, gratitude, and love. May, I was thinking I was going to put love first, but then I thought if I'm not healthy, I can't love and share my love. And also if I'm not healthy, I cannot inspire. Um, health is number one, because if you've got your health, you've got all the other things too. Gratitude is a massive thing for me. I think if you're grateful for everything that is you're blessed with in your life, then better things will happen and you can be a better person because of that. So we spent quite a lot of time doing that. And then we did a meditation to find our mission statement. So our mission statement is kind of like our life purpose. Um, so we had to really go into our heart and get out of our heads to do this. We had to really let go and do this meditation and we got our mission statement. Um, so then we had to make a poster. But this was like 3 a.m. So I went to sleep and I did my poster in the morning. So this is my poster, by the way. I'll show you it, but I'm... I've changed... I've dropped it. 
So I've just dropped my poster, but I have since changed my poster. So I'll just give you an example of it. There has our like my life purpose, my away values, towards values, um, loads of bits and bobs in there, relationship, um, goals 2019. So day six, the last day, um, we did another meditation. And in this meditation, we had to think of our earliest memory. Now, the reason for this is because they're saying our earliest memory is what has shaped our lives. And when I thought of mine, it's quite crazy to then um, combine it with everything that's happened in my life. And it's weird to really connect the dots. It's very strange. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that was, you know, a thing really. I just thought it was something I could remember. But sometimes if it's a negative memory, which it mainly, not necessarily seems really bad, but it's kind of like an earliest memory for a reason. So he's saying that if you remember that, you can then, and then acknowledge that, think about what you did before then. So you had to go back and you could then think of other things. It's crazy. Basically, we had to take everything we've learned in these six days and integrate it into our physiology, into our hearts and into our souls. So we had to get into a group of four and we had to basically scream at each other. So this was something that I would have thought would have been pretty embarrassing and cringy before this. Like I'd be like, oh, I don't dare do it. But one of my things that I was screaming was I am fucking fearless. And I was thinking, if I'm gonna be saying this, I have got to go for it. So, so yeah, we had to do that. So we had to be like, I, Jordan, see, hear, feel and know that I am fucking fearless. I, and then we had to carry on and do other things as well because we had to do it until we felt it and really deeply felt it because then it's in us and then we can like, carry on with our lives having that in us and feel like it is part of us not just something we shouted at some, uh, an event you know just to these three strangers um but it was really empowering and in the end it was really fun like I thought oh no this is oh then I was like get out your head get out your head you're dead get in your heart and it's gonna be cool and it was it was fun and yeah we then had to write like a love letter to ourselves mine was quite short because I was struggling with writing and it was so cold in there um apparently that's getting sent to us at some point but the Oh, the experience was insane and I am so grateful that I went and I'm so grateful that I had the courage to, to go because it was a lot of planning a lot of you know a lot of money um but life-changing and if you can go I recommend it people thought I was kind of like huh crazy because it was my first event whereas most people went to a UPW first which is Unleash the Power Within and it's a shorter event and, and less money um, so maybe go to one of those first, but I kind of thought, well, no, I really want to go to a date with Destiny, so don't waste your money doing the other one, go there. But in fact, I think I'm going to go with, to UPW in London in April, so I'm going to do both, so it doesn't really matter, because um, you'll probably want to do another one, I guess. Anyway, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Also, I must say, if you're going to this, play full out, otherwise it's not worth it. Really submerge yourselves. Don't think like I maybe thought a little while ago I was thinking oh usually I'd find this embarrassing if I'd have been there and been like I'm not doing it because it's embarrassing that would have been pointless me going because you need to get right in it everyone's there for the same reasons everyone wants to live the best life possible so you might as well just go for it and jump in but um I do recommend it it's it's amazing and you know I hope I haven't ruined it for any of you guys but I just wanted to share as much of my knowledge as I can um and if you've watched this you've watched it because for a reason so yeah i hope this was informative and what you were looking for in this video apologies if it's a bit long but that it's it's a long it's a long event <laughs> um thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it and um, please subscribe if you haven't already and i will speak to you soon take care bye